Open Minds, Healthy Minds, Ontario's mental health and addiction strategy aims to create a province where everyone enjoys good mental health and well-being throughout their lifetime. In support of the strategy, PSSP, the Provincial System Support Program at CAMH, helps diverse partners such as education, mental health, addictions, youth justice, child welfare and people with lived experience work together to improve the system of care. With coordination from six ministries and funding from the Government of Ontario, PSSP sponsored 18 service collaboratives, four of which were dedicated to junctions between the mental health, addictions and justice systems. Evidence tells us that systemic racism, inadequate housing and trauma put individuals with mental health and addiction challenges at risk of becoming justice involved. Let's take a look at four communities that are addressing points in the system from police contact to the courtroom to reintegration. The goal was to improve services for justice-involved youth with addiction and mental health issues. So when we engaged with our justice partners, we talked about how far more efficient this youth court system could be if there was a dedicated day, a dedicated time, in which we could allocate our resources and our agencies and our people to make sure that the services and the opportunities for youth that were going to be required were there and available. All of the resources are there. Um, they can be identified which ones are the most appropriate immediately on their first court date. They just make progress almost by the second court date, which was almost unheard of before we had the screening team. My favorite aspect of this program is seeing the results. When you're seeing kids who have had 20, 30 police contacts in the last year begin to work with us, and now over a matter of, say, six months, they have had zero police contacts, that's a success. Intersections is an early intervention where police and community partners help navigate family members and youth to supportive services. An intersections worker is a support person who really is the one to develop those positive relationships with the children and families who are referred to the program and to be the one with the experience and the expertise to support the families in getting them connected to services and getting the support that they need. Some of those services could be a quick turnaround, could be just an attachment back to their school program, anger management. Other youth that are presenting more with multifaceted mental health issues get referrals to their local mental health agency. And during that waitlist time, that's a really crucial role for intersection workers to support and facilitate because they're that soft handoff that while they're waiting for that long-term service, they're there to support the family and youth into supportive services. We've seen a reduced calls for service with uh, youth and families that we've been dealing with and definitely see this due to the fact that we have, were able to connect them to the right services at the right time. The one thing that I like about the intersection program above all else is it provides hope. Trauma-informed practice is a paradigm shift. It's changing the way people think about how they deal with other people. It really opens the door to, to, to greater understanding in really understanding why a youth is angry, you know, why perhaps they've gotten into trouble with the law. We did a fantastic workshop on looking at uh, trauma through a First Nations lens. Just learning more about their culture and how we can tap into that for our young people in the community to seek those supports within their culture. It's helping youth to learn to care again and acknowledging their courage and their resiliency and that they have skills and they have resources and they have a lot to bring to the table. We created two sets of programs. We had collaborative work with youth where we worked with youth partners and then we actually did a Toronto Justice Collaborative with adults. The support that we've had from the Justice Collaborative has provided some of the backbone for this project that has given it its strength and credibility and has helped us to garner incredible support from the government. And this is where an organization like CAMH brings their expertise to the community partners and just removes barriers. We're going to continue to work to support meaningful change for justice-involved clients by continuing to spread, scale up, and implement interventions in new communities and with new populations. So the key ingredients moving forward are, first of all, time to implement something and to learn from the collaboration. Secondly, uh, having resources in place both for coordination and in some instances new services that are necessary on the ground. And I guess the, the, the last piece would be how do you build in from the beginning a sort of a formative evaluation where people learn as they go. I think some of the very positive experiences uh, out of the Justice Collaboratives 
uh, is the quality uh, of the services and the expertise that's being brought to the table is being leveraged. I think what we really want to talk uh, about is, uh, is building community and when you talk about community you talk about collaboration. Really pull people together to be able to be trained and work together on similar outcomes and indicators and really look at evaluating what they're doing uh, together as a collective. It's captured the imagination of our community and it's engaged a broad cross-section of our community in making it work.